Hello. Welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. We've taken a few side roads, so now we're back on one of our main roads and we're looking at a pen that I recently got from Moon Man. Interesting graphics. This is a package that we've seen before. Yeah, a lot of labeling identification on it. But it's an M8-4F. So this is color number four. So let's strip the sleeve off. Look at the box and look at the pen. The sleeve just slides off. It's a nice tight fit, which is what you would like. And it keeps this beautiful Moon Man box nice and safe and secure. A little bit of sparkly stuff on the outside of the box. Nice spring-loaded lid. And we see a really beautiful pen. <clears throat> so the M8 originally came in gold and silver. The gold sold out very quickly. The silver took a little bit longer. And then they came out with a multicolored version kind of like an abalone look and then this is the most recent version that I'm aware of and we'll compare all of them a little bit later but let's just feast our eyes on this and you have that nice high-end label that's attached to the clip excellent designed clip and this is a one piece here not a folded metal and I'll be talking about the cross peerless because that's the last pen I reviewed and, and that clip was also a nice design but was it was folded metal so I think a solid clip like this is a definitely a nicer up upscale type of clip and nice spring I like to have some sunlight when I'm showing off a pen like this but I think the LEDs are doing it justice it's a nice clean white light I mean this pen feels great in the hand it has a decent weight to it it's very smooth and shiny as you can see and those chips are just excellent I love the variety the size the color the pearl essence the chatoyancy all of those features and it's really a nice clean minimalist minimalistic design no cap band the cap unscrews a little bit less than two turns which is great we'll see that moon man fine nib which I personally find to be a very excellent nib a black section which has been on a lot of the recent moon man models and, and I find that section to be very good I like it I like an upturn at the bottom but the way the shape and design is and, and the girth works well with my hands and we have a gold threads uh, gold metal threads there in between the section and the barrel just great design nice simplistic design the sunscrews and is what you would expect but again a nice high-end design that you have metal threads on metal threads you have these block threads which work great on the cap you can see those threads in the cap they feel very good they work well standard converter but it's to me it's on the higher end of converters has that nice uh, silicone insert with this metal band on it. it gives a structural stability as well as a nice seal against the uh, end of that nib assembly the nib assembly unscrews number six nib you can swap it out with whatever you would like a pen bbs nib as some people like to put in here i personally like these moon man nibs so we're going to compare it to some other pens. We're going to give it a flush because I flush every pen that I get before I ink it up. And then we're going to see how this nib writes. This is supposedly the next generation of this pen. And I think they did a phenomenal job. That coating and finish is just perfect. And those chips just really set it off. And we'll compare it to its grandfather, which was the Schaefer Balance 
in uh, ebonized pearl. So here we are with all four variants of the Moonman M8. We'll call this color number one, which is that gold foil one with nice big chunks of gold foil. Color number two, which was the first one that I got, which has the chunks of silver foil in it. Some people didn't like the gold clip, but I'm fine with that. And here we have color number three, uh, being referred to now as purple on auctions, and it's a smaller chips, but still those multicolored chips. And here we have color number four, which is the latest model in color. And these two are still available, the purple one and the green one. The silver and gold are pretty much sold out and have been sold out for a while. Uh, it took me a while to get my gold one. It took me three times of trying to order it and buy it to one finally showed up. And this was on the expensive side where these were in the $25 range. This one was closer to 40 but I wanted a gold one and I finally got one. So I'm very happy about that. So when we look at these up close, we can see how they just really did an excellent job in putting together a unique finish which they did a very good job with it. And I know some people have had inconsistencies in the clear coat, but I don't have any problems with these four. So I think this is a good representative sample from my perspective. And I think they did have some manufacturing issues in the beginning, so that might explain some of those pens that may be out there for sale that should probably not have left the factory, but considering how popular these are, that's not unexpected. Here we are comparing the M8 to the Schaefer Balance, which is the ebonized pearl finish. Considering this pen is uh, well over 80 years old, probably closer to 90, and those ebonides chunks in there have probably yellowed and discolored over time, but conceptually it's the same idea. The Moonman design has even gone one step further. As you can see, the ebonite, ebonized pearl version is just the straight part of the barrel and also the straight part of the cap. As it starts to curve down, it, it's black. There's no ebonized elements in it. So these are actually two different parts put together to give you that streamlined look. But I just am impressed with Moonman's ability of taking this idea and concept and modernizing it and giving us a nice full-size pen. This came in a large size, but unfortunately I was uh, never able to acquire one at, a, at what I consider to be a reasonable price. But that's understandable because they are very collectible. And the M8 is not a small pen. Here we see it compared to the Cross Peerless, which is also not a small pen. It's almost into the oversized category, but it holds its own. Let's look at the nib end. And when we compare the nib and section, the M8 also holds its own in this oversized category. Certainly not as ornate a nib, but you got a Sailor 18 karat nib versus a stamped Chinese steel nib with a gold plating on it. But the sections are similarly shaped and, and uh, sized, and this is actually even a little bit larger. The Peerless does post very well. Of course, it throws the balance off quite a bit. The M8 does post, but it's easily dislodged, so it does work if you need to post, and it doesn't change the balance that much. And here's a little bit of a close-up that might show off those similarities and some of the differences. Here we are with some diffuse sunlight. I just think it's always interesting to look at these types of pens with these interesting visual effects with a little bit different light. I'm impressed with those chips. I'm certain they're colorized shells. And if we play the LED light over them, I'll get a little bit of a different look. I think the other thing of a high-end pen is we need to look inside the cap and see how they've treated that. The LED reveals a nice cap liner in there. It seals the entire cap 
it seals those metal bits that are used to hold in the clip and I've had this I've had the silver one inked up for many months now and it can set for a few weeks I uncap it it writes first time every time very consistent flow it has Krishna ink in it which I wouldn't call a wet ink but this does seal that nib very well so kudos for that design here we are with the uh, M8 disassembled at least as far as I'm going to disassemble it and I could take the converter apart but it works well and it looks like it's fairly well lubricated so no need to do that this metal cap pops off so overall this is extremely well engineered and manufactured quality components all the gold tone bits are nice heavily electroplated so I can see they're going to be staying golden for a long period of time uh, the nib is the classic moon man fine nib and It'd be nice if it came in medium or broad or things like that, but I enjoy this, and I'm not a person who generally likes fine in nibs. I generally like a thicker, wetter line, but this gives me a nice wet line, and it's more like a, a fine medium than a Asian fine nib. In looking at the feed, I also find the feed to be very interesting. Kind of has two small channels there. And right in the middle here, it looks like the inner part of that channel has been machined away all the way back to uh, the assembly that uh, gets the ink in from the converter. You know, it's a typical injection molded with a lot of uh, fins on it. And there's that channel in the back, which is typical. It's also flat sided, so it only fits into the nib assembly in one way. I think you can see how that channel has been opened up and maybe that's how they regulate the flow but I think that's a, a machining operation after the injection molding. The converter I also find to be a good design and it's designed to fit right into the end of that nib assembly. Uh, that's great. Nice tight fit. That metal ring is going to keep it stable, and that silicone insert is going to ensure a good seal against that nipple at the end of the nib assembly, nib, nib housing. I put an O-ring here. This is just an O-ring that uh, goes into the Pen BBS uh, nib collars, and I'm also going to put an O-ring at that top groove at the at at the, that part of the nib assembly, and also going to silicone grease the threads because that's what I do. Some viewers have talked about O-rings, they get lost. I buy them whenever I can find them on, on eBay or YouTube. I buy the parts kits from Penn BBS. These are the smallest O-rings that I have, which are pretty much the ones that work in the Jinhao nib assemblies, 991, 992, and I'm certain there's a bunch of other ones. You can see the variety of different O-rings that Penn BBS uses, clear ones, black ones. There's some seals for probably the 456 or the 355. So the part kits has a really good bunch of, of pieces in it that are, can be used to make certain your pen lasts a lifetime. So this is the ink that called out to me. It's Monsoon Sky, which they're calling a, a teal ink. Look at the color card. Um, it's in the teal family. It's definitely on the blue side of the teal family, but there's a little bit of green in there. If we look at the chromatography, ah, I don't see as much green as I had hoped for. It's a little bit there at the very top, but it's definitely in the blue-green family, but I thought it would go well with the green M8. Ready for the writing sample. So I've talked about this pen being great feel in the hand, which is your first impression when you pick up a pen so this this is good as any pen you're going to pick up visually it's extremely interesting i like the minimalistic shape and design that a cap unscrews with just a little bit over two turns and you would think it would post well but it doesn't it will post but it doesn't really stay there and you can jam it on but not something that I'm going to be doing. It fits great in the hand without posting. We'll give you some links. 
that section is, is just about perfect for me as far as the the girth and diameter goes. You don't feel those threads, you don't feel that step up, so this is a pen for me that's very comfortable to write with. I want to get this video out soon because this pen is still available, the green one and the purple one, and this is the green one. I don't know how long they're going to be available. I think this is a new production run, so they might be available for a while, but not a lot of sellers. Here's what a search revealed on eBay. And I'm focusing on eBay as a source of selling. I haven't, you know, investigated AliExpress or Taobu or any of the other sources. Um, that's the thing I'm comfortable with, and I think a lot of my viewers also. So let's put some ink on paper. Well, this nib is very smooth, which I think you heard. But it has inconsistent ink flow. Which I do not enjoy. I think it has to do with baby's bottom on this nib. Here's some close-up pictures comparing this nib to the nib in the silver M8 and this has substantially more tipping material and it's more rounded so with just light pressure you know, now it seems to be writing better than it did before um, but I think some people have found these nibs to be dry and this one's certainly drier than the silver one which we'll look at real quick here's the silver one and you can see that line is wider and we, when we looked at these under the loop, the tipping material on, on this one is flatter versus the one on the green one is more rounded. So this has a little bit more of a surface area and it is great tipping on these nibs. That's one of the things that I'm, I'm very impressed with. But this pen I really enjoy writing with and the green one I do not. So I'm going to show you what I do to minimize baby's bottom. So I just use this nail board. In the United States you can get them for a buck or two in supermarkets, uh, pharmacies, drugstores, that type of thing. It has three uh, gradients on it. This is the most coarse, this is medium, and this is fine in polishing. And it's generally called that. This is like for cutting, this is for general uh, work on the nail and this is for the polishing piece. So I've seen Nibmeisters do this. So we're just going to do some figure eight, some loop-de-loops with a little bit of pressure on it. And then we're going to go to the medium side and do the same type of movement. And then we're going to go to the polishing side and complete the movements. I'm going to wipe it down and then see how the nib writes. This is after smoothing. I definitely think it's closer now to what I enjoy. It's certainly wetter, it's certainly more consistent. It still requires a little bit more pressure than I like to get it to write and I think I'm going to do some flossing but overall I think the nib is at about 90% of where I like it to be. So let's rate this pen. And again, this is my subjective opinion as I'm using this pen. I'm going to give it a 9.7. Two checks for the build, the look, the design, the engineering. And even though the nib required a little bit of work, I'm still going to give the nib one check. I mean, I'm very pleased with this pen. I have four of them, so I'm hopefully I'm pleased with them. And, you know, check this pen out if you 
if you think a big and girthy pen might be something you would like to try to write with, then I certainly <clears throat> couldn't recommend a better pen to start with than, than this Moon Man M8. It's it's done well, and the construction, the engineering, you know, the the metal here in the section, the metal here at the bottom of the barrel, metal on metal, you know, the the nice cap liner, the nib doesn't dry out, and it's a decent, nice looking number six nib that that writes well. So we've reached the end of this video. So thank you for watching. You can see it started up pretty good after uh, that little talk. So uh, we're in week whatever, and there's many, many more weeks to go of our stay-at-home requirements, at least here in, in the United States and in the state of New Jersey. Other states are starting to open up, so hopefully they show positive results from that, and uh, we can all learn about how we need to slowly get back to what will be the new normal. I don't think anybody's going to think it's going to be exactly like it was before. The virus hit but we'll keep our fingers crossed <clears throat> we'll do what we need to do for ourselves our family and our friends so find a great pen find some ink you like find somebody to write with pick somebody at random or you know I'm certain there's friends and relatives that would love to get a written letter from you so give it a shot uh, to coin a phrase what do you got to lose and you got a lot to gain. So we've reached the end of this video. May you find joy and pleasure in, in the simple things and may you start exploring some things you may never have thought you would get into, but now's the time to do it. So we're going to say bye until the next video. Yep, the nib's writing well now.